Oh, it's time to get it going. Minn Kota unlocked the lake, and the lake we're talking about this time is that one right there. That's Lake Ontario. It flows into a river known as the St. Lawrence River, so of course we're talking about the final event of the season, 2021 Bassmaster Elite Series. Ronnie Moore, every time we go to this place, we get a great, great tournament. But even starting on that high level, the one we just witnessed is one of the best of all time. And we have the expectations. Not all fisheries have a chance to break 100 pounds for smallmouth, especially uh, exclusively smallmouth. The St. Lawrence is one we always have an eye on because it's been so close so many times. And whether you're in the lake, out in the river, whether it's early July, late August, we always expect big weights. And we saw that this year, day one, to be in contention, you have to have mid 20 pound bags, no matter what. And day one leader Bernie Schultz did that 25-5, nothing but great New York smallmouth. And he was our day one leader. Bernie Schultz fishing in his 347th Bassmaster event here. Of course, he's got a great record here. The past decade, he's got to, he's got three top 20s and two top 10s, so great credentials here. And he found a spot he thought was great. He had a lot of confidence in. And for some of these anglers, it's a little different this year because you're not allowed to fish in Canada. Only New York water, so some guys have had great history here, but it's on the wrong side of the border. For Bernie, he's got a lot of his intel in Canada, but he found something magical in New York. And we got to watch him day one a little bit, Skyping and day two out in the water with him. And really, Tommy, he was maximizing a small area. Compared to what some of these anglers have, he was maximizing a 250 to 300 yard stretch that he had all to himself. Not an unknown place. In fact, it's a well-known spot, but some reason or another, he got left alone and he credits that for being a part of his success formula too. And if you're gonna run this far from Waddington down the river towards the lake, you may as well go all the way to the lake and that's what anglers did, but Bernie found a spot right in the river. Four pounder anyway. Right where you want him, right there. Look at that. He's probably, he's, he's close to five, four and, it's a good one. That's all I know. Well, Bernie Schultz, first place, uh, first place after day two. He drops to fifth and then finally finishes in eighth. This spot just did not quite hold out. But one thing that's great for Bernie, like you said, great track record here. He's a Floridian, loves fishing shallow. So you think up north he'd suffer. No, he maximizes those shallow smallmouth tremendously. And two guys who really focused on shallow smallmouth for a lot of this event, Chris and Corey Johnston. Now for Chris Johnston, he is one we have high expectations for because he got second in 2019, he got first in 2020, and then we got to have him on camera as one of our Angler of the Year contenders on day one. And you see that 23-7, he was right at the top of the leaderboard after day one this week too. When he won last time around, he 27 pounds plus on the first day, he scared 100 pounds during that effort. And for Chris and Corey, those guys have, have fished this area a whole bunch. They've done team tournaments, they've fished in Canada, they've fished in New York, they've shared water. And the tactics Chris was using, he got to mix it up. Drop shot, hair jig, spy bait. He did a lot of different things to maximize his St. Lawrence River event. Oh, it's a giant. Oh my God. Good God, this is the, probably that six I saw earlier. Stay hooked. This is the one. Literally just in the corner. Literally by a piece of skin. Don't pull. Oh, yeah, baby. Just hooked. Caught that one just blind casting. There we go. Nice job. That's the one we were looking for. Third place on day one, second place after a couple of days, back to third and then finishes in fifth place. But a lot of that was deference to the possibility that his brother might be able to pull off a win here. That's the one deal. Like we said, they share water. They're not far from each other. They're splitting up fish. They basically got these four and five pounders named. They know which ones they're targeting, who they're using up. And for Corey Johnston, he was one who really unlocked the lake shallow. We know the spawn has already happened for a lot of these fish in the river, but the lake, the lake is a little bit behind the river. So when you get to the mouth, you're gonna have fish that are post-spawn, you're gonna have fish on bed, and he was able to balance that. He said he found four extra fish during the tournament, not during practice, and he was able to take that lead going into the final day, but a tough final day dropped him to fourth place. 88 pounds, just two pounds short of the win. Yeah, we look at Corey Johnson, and he was saving those special fish for the final day, and they sort of disappointed him there. Of course, someone who was not disappointed the first three days was Justin Atkins. Justin Atkins was in a unique situation here. 
win and you're in. Just like Clark Wendell, as a matter of fact, as we see right there, both these guys had one route to the Classic next year, and that's going to be to win at the St. Lawrence. And if you're going to have a poor season like Clark Winland has, our 2020 Angler of the Year winner, surprisingly a tough year, you want the last event to be somewhere you love to fish like Lake Ontario, especially if there's a win and end factor. That's the way to start it right there. Second cast. That's a good one too. <laughs> Alright, I need five, now I need four. Stick in there. Got it started. Mm. Get me some of Clark Winlet has got four top 10 finishes with the Bass Masters at this incredible place. He has a great, great connection to the St. Lawrence and Lake Ontario. It's tough to see that leaderboard right there. I know you've caught 20 plus pounds every day of the tournament and you didn't even break first or second place. 88 pounds for him for a couple days of fishing. It's fantastic. Hey, we saw it 2020 out in Lake Ontario. He likes that big water, Tommy. He's not afraid to go out there. He said, anytime the lake's in play, I'm going to go there. And that's where he went. Hey, and if you're thinking, I've got to win this event, Ontario may be the place to go. And that is why Justin Atkins gambled four straight days and put all his eggs in Ontario's basket. Yeah, man, I'm having a blast. Oh, I got a bait that I feel like them big ones are committing to. That's a big one. Just come here. Gosh, I just want to like jump in the lake on them. I just you get, get over the side of the boat as far as I can. Mm -hmm. I see way too much jig hanging out. That's got me nervous. Come here. Come here. Boom! Just a super performance, so consistent throughout this entire turn. Found a special place, you know, a flat with grass and rock and just a big, big school of fish present there. Pretty much all four days. We saw with the tougher weather that we had on the final day, we see Justin Atkins there, 20 pounds, 14 ounces, far less than what he had had day one through three. And for Atkins, he was able to pick off fish on his forward-facing sonar, see fish that were maybe 15, 20 feet of water out in front of the boat suspending. Those fish that are normally uncatchable, Atkins was able to catch them. But this was a tougher day. It seemed like it for the whole top 10 that, hey, it's not going to be the biggest catching day, except when one guy comes out of nowhere and catches 26 pounds. You're kind of at his mercy, Tommy. Well, he wasn't quite exactly out of nowhere. In fact, Takumi Ito's story goes back to last year. He served notice for us in his first year on the elites that he was here to play, especially when we go to northern lakes like this. And that's why day one was so uh, kind of off the wall. 17-15 down in 38th place. That's not where you expect Taku Ito, but he came back every day stronger and stronger and stronger, and he ended it with his best day ever in smallmouth Disneyland. Wow, big one. Yes, come on. Come on. Talk time. Come on. Come on. No, 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 coming, no, coming, no, coming, no, no, coming, no, coming, no, coming. No, coming, no, coming, no, coming, no, coming, no, coming. Oh, it's a giant, it's a giant, 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 giant. Gosh, gosh, gosh. Wow. Wow. Gosh. Taku time. We'll skip to the way in and there he is, Takumi Ito, his second year with the Bassmaster Elite Series. He's had 24 starts and he's got nine top tens already. That's how strong this guy is. And he's almost perfect on the northern swings his first two years in the Elite's making the cuts for the final day and almost all of them. Taku Ito achieving a lifelong dream to win a Bassmaster Elite Series event and he did it in astounding fashion in the final event of the 2021 season. And each of the last two days, he held the Phoenix Big Bass of the Day Award as well. That was an important component of all his uh, great, great doings there. What a show he put on. We've got so much more to look forward to with that guy running. We get to peel the layers back of Taku Ito, his history in Japan, learning to fish from a video game, wanting to come to America to pursue that dream, and then doing it in his second season. Everyone loves more Taku on camera, and we saw his excitement on that final day. The last one and one of the best. Today's Minn Kota unlocked the lake from the St. Lawrence. 